Hello guys, this is Vaseem from Eddie Reka and I welcome you all to this session in which I'm going to talk about if else in Python. Let's start the session and take a look at the agenda. So first of all, I'm going to talk about Python conditions and then I will discuss what is if and else statements in Python. Moving further, I will tell you the syntax with a small example and the control flow as well. After that, I will discuss shorthand if statements and finally to sum up this session, I will show you a use case with nested if else. I hope you guys are clear with the agenda and I suggest you to subscribe to Edureka channel for more exciting tutorials and also press the bell icon to get the latest updates from Edureka. Now without any further ado, let's start this session. Talking about Python conditions, there are a few logical conditions which are supported in Python. And the reason I'm telling you about these conditions is because these conditions are used in if statements. So following are the statements that we have which is equals to in which we have two variables and we are using the equal to operator for this condition guys. Then we have not equal to similarly we have less than more than and there is less than equal to and more than equal to. So you will be able to understand this better when I'm showing you the example guys because when we are using the if statements it's actually a decision making statement guys. So we have like a condition. So if it is true then we are going to execute certain commands or certain statements and if it is false we are going to skip the execution guys. So you'll be able to understand this when we are working on the example guys. So just to show you guys what these conditions are I have mentioned all these conditions. So now that we are done with the Python conditions let's try to understand what is if and else in Python. So if basically is a condition statement which will have a test expression and if the expression is true then the body of the statement is executed. Similarly, when the test expression is false, the execution moves to the next block, which is going to be the else block, guys. And then it is executed anyway. So it is like a last resort in if you're talking about layman terms. So when the whole block is not executing, the else block will execute. So this is all about if and else statement, guys. So you'll be able to understand this better when I'm going to tell you the example or when we are going to write the examples in PyCharm, guys. And then we also have an else if or elif that we have in Python. So it is a subsequent statement with another text expression which means that if uh, if statement is false the execution will move to the elif statement and if the elif statement is also false the execution will move to the else statement. So now let's take a look at the flow diagram to understand how it works guys. So first of all when the execution starts the test expression is going to be tested and if it's true the block will be executed which is the if block or the body of if in this flow diagram guys. Or if the expression is false, the execution will go to the next block, which will be either another expression in the elif block or the else block. So this is how the flow works inside a if statement, guys. So now that we know how it works, guys, let's take a look at the syntax for if statement. So as you can see, first of all, we write the if statement, that is the if keyword. After that, we write the expression followed by a colon. And after that, we write the statements that we need to execute inside the if block. After that we can have an elif block or an else block. Similarly for all those blocks we have to provide certain statements that we need to be executed. So this is how the syntax works guys. So now that we know how the execution works. Let's start with a simple example to check if a number is a even number or an odd number. So let's take it up to PyCharm guys. So we are in the PyCharm guys. If you don't know what PyCharm is please check out other Edureka tutorials and you will be able to know what kind of an IDE PyCharm is and how do we work on PyCharm. So first of all, let me just go with a simple example to check if a number is an even number or not. First of all, I'll take a number. Let's say 10 over here and I want to check if 10 is an even number or not. So I'm just going to show how I'm going to write the condition. So this is a percentile operator guys. So what it's going to do is it's going to calculate the remainder. So if it is equal to zero, so if I divide a number, let's say 10 by 2, reminder is going to be 0. So in any case, if a number is an even number, it's going to show us the remainder as 0. So we are going to write the print statement over here, which is even number. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to print another, let's say I'm going to give another test expression. Let's say if LF, else if, which is x percentile 2 is not equal to zero. Now we know that if it, the remainder is not zero, the number is going to be, of course, and obviously it's going to be an odd number. So we'll just print an odd number over here. And I'm going to give another, let's say, else statement. So if none of these conditions are true, the execution will move to the else block and it will print. Try again. Let's say. Now when I run this, I'm getting the output as even number because. Uh, 
our percentile is going to be zero over here so let's try the command line input guys so i'll just write int input enter a number and when i run this again so i have to enter a number over here let's say i want 20 which is an even number now let's try with 13 guys it's an odd number so we know that it's working pretty fine but over here we can do one more thing guys we are providing three statements here which is not exactly necessary because we only have two conditions if it's the percentile is going to be zero or the remainder is zero it's even if it's not it's an odd number that's like an obvious statement over here so to make the program optimized or you know efficient in a way what i'm going to do is i'm going to just provide two statements over here and in the else block i'll just write odd number so you will see the difference here now when i enter an even number let's say 10 again it's showing me that it's an even number but when i run this again and i write the number as 30 it's an odd number even though it's not even testing another condition which is if the percentile is not equal to zero but we are getting the same statement as it was getting before because we only have two conditions here it's either going to be zero or it's not going to be zero so we can use the else statement over here which is going to make our program very efficient guys so now to understand this better let's take a rather complex example so we'll try to find out if a number is a prime number or not so let's say i give a if statement as long as it's greater than zero if x is greater than zero for i in let's say range and we want the range from let's say 2 to x so i'll explain this later guys now i'll write one more if statement so if x percentile 2 is equal to 0 not a prime number and else print prime number so when i run this let's say i want to enter a number so we already know that 3 is a prime number guys so i'll just write 3 which is showing me that it's prime number to run it again let's try for another number let's say 29 so i guess 29 is also a prime number guys all right so i have to provide a control statement over here so let's see how it differs so when i once again write 29 i'm getting prime number as well so let's try for another number so i'll write 10 over here which is not a prime number okay i'll have to do once again let's put a break statement now when i run again oh, let's say 12 which is exactly not a prime number so to explain this first of all i'm providing a condition which is if statement so first of all my condition is the number has to be greater than zero so let's say if i provide a number let's say minus two no output because it's not going to enter this block so to explain this let's print one more condition or i'll just print over here give a positive number and when i run it again and provide the number as minus two so it will show me that uh, give me a positive number as the output so this explains things now if i am moving into the if block when the number is greater than zero i have one loop guys so to know more about loops guys check out other edureka tutorials and you'll be able to understand this better then so what happens here i have a for loop in which i have this variable i which is going to be in range 2 and x so what it means is the number will be in the range from 2 until the number x so let's say i have x is equal to 5 the range is going to be 2 3 4 and 5 so because we already know that 1 and 2 are 2 is a prime number guys or 1 is not so we are starting from 2 and then we have one more if condition which is saying that if x percentile 2 is equal to 0 which means that the number is divisible by another number so which is exactly not a constraint of a prime number so we are printing prime number over here and because we are in a loop so we have to use a control statement which is a break statement guys as soon as this is true this is going to break or it is going to exit the block now we have one more statement else which means if this is not true which is uh, x percentile 2 if the remainder is 0 it will print not a prime number else it will print it is a prime number so i hope you guys are clear with the concept of using if else in a statement and we, i have also shown you how you can use a for loop inside this and this is a simple program you can write to find out if a number is a prime number or not so now that we are familiar with how we can use if and else in python let's take a look at another approach which is shorthand if and else so i'll clear this so what exactly is shorthand if so basically you can call the shorthand if as if you're writing the statement in single line so i'll show you guys 
so what I'm going to do is I'll just take two input so I'll write X now the if statement the shorthand if statement is going to take place so what I'll do is I'll just write if X is greater than Y print greater now when I execute this let's see what happens so I'll just write the number as um, let's say 10 another number as 8 it is a greater number and similarly let's say I want to print if it's a smaller number or not what I'll do is I'll just write okay I'll have to change this so I'll just write print greater if X is greater than Y else print smaller now when I run this I'll enter a number let's say 10 again and another number will be 12 so it is a smaller number so as you can see guys so this is an optimized way of writing a FL statement guys so I'll just if you have like two conditions to test out or the decision making is not a very big deal in a problem statement so you can write it like this and similarly instead of just one statement we can use multiple statements as well so I'm going to show you that as well so let's say I want to get one more condition over here which is uh, if a number is equal to zero or not so I'll just write if again so in this we have multiple statements in our shorthand if else so first of all I have a print statement which is going to print greater if X is greater than Y or else it will print equal if X is equal to Y or else it will print smaller so let's execute this guys so first of all I'll just write 10 the other number is going to be 20 so the output will be smaller and then again uh, the number is 10 let's say and another number is 10 again it is going to show equal and let's say I have a number 20 and the next number is 15 it is going to show me that it's a greater number so this is how you can use shorthand if and else guys so now that we are done with shorthand programs let's take a look at the use case in which we will make a rather complex program using the nested conditional statements so I'm going to clear all this guys so for a nested statement first of all we have to know what a nested if else is so basically nested statements are in which like more than one statements are present so let's say if I have an if statement and it is saying that if X is greater than Y so the nested if statement will be I'll add one more if statement and again in this I will add one more if statement so I keep adding all these if statements and this is going to be my nested block guys to understand this let's take an example so we'll write okay let's first of all get a input variable so I'll just write enter a number here so let's say if I have an if statement so I'll just write if X is greater than 0 I will have an if statement so let's say if X is uh, less than 5 it will print less than 5 and uh, or else it will print greater than 5 now let me have one more statement guys let's have an elif statement and inside this let me get one more statement if x is uh, greater than 10 let's say so I'll have to make it it has to be x has to be less than 10 over here okay I'll have to add one and operator now let's say if x is greater than 10 greater than or let's say equal to as well so I'll just print greater than or equal to 10 and else statement let's say enter a number again so let's execute this first of all let me get a number less than 5 so I'll just write 3 so it is showing me that it's less than 5 and let's say I want the number as 7 it is going to show me that it is greater than 5 so if the number is equal to or greater than 10 so it is going to show me that greater than or equal to 10 now if I give the number as let's say minus 2 it is saying me that enter number again fair enough so let's try to add a few more statements over here guys so in this one also let's say if x is uh, equal to 15 print the number okay not equal to let's say greater than or equal to the number is greater than 15 or let's have one more statement guys so else print the number is less than 15 so let's run it again guys and I have to enter the number let's say I want to enter 13 so it is showing me two outputs which is greater than or equal to 10 and the number is less than 15 so this is how the nested if else statement works guys we can have infinite number of if statement inside an if statement and you can use the and operator as well guys 
so this is a simple example of using a nested if else guys so instead of uh, the simple statement we can have other optimized or more efficient uh, statements guys so now that we are done with the nested if else program as well i hope you guys are clear with the concept discussed in this session if you have any questions, you can mention them in the comment sections and our team will be happy to get back to you as soon as possible. And don't forget to check out other Edureka Python blogs and tutorials to master your skills and kickstart your learning. And I suggest you to subscribe to Edureka channel for more exciting tutorials and also press the bell icon to get the latest updates. Thank you guys. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!